Compression bandaging is one of the best ways to reduce swelling and lymphedema in an area of the body. It's considered part of the gold standard treatment in lymphedema therapy. For those that are new here, my name is Kelly. I am a certified lymphedema therapist and oncology physical therapist. In today's video, I'm gonna show a general way to do compression bandaging for the leg for swelling and lymphedema. I will show which products are good to use and go through each part step by step. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe down below for weekly new videos. You can also join us on Instagram or check out our website for more related content. If you're looking for an easy to follow printed guide, you can find one on my website on how to apply compression bandages, including expert tips, washing instructions, bandaging supply recommendations, and how to do the herringbone and spiral techniques. I will put a link up above as well as in my description box down below. Now, having support from a CLT is ideal so they can individualize this for you and add or take away any various paddings and layers. It's also important to get clearance for safety from your doctor. Lastly, I understand this isn't feasible or easy for someone to do, especially on their own. So someone may need help or get assistance to complete this bandaging routine. I hope this video though shows you the step-by-step -step process to follow along with. Compression is the main component of congestive therapy to help reduce volume from lymphedema, but also for general swelling. Moving into a compression stocking right away is not going to be effective for the majority of individuals as they're meant as maintenance garments. So they're not going to shrink someone down, they're more going to keep someone at that size. So if someone has a lot of fluid going through compression bandaging first, anywhere from two weeks, even up to six weeks for some, to shrink down the size of the limb, to get rid of the fluid, reduce the volume first, then someone can go into a compression garment to then maintain that new size. Again, work with a certified lymphedema therapist in your area for more individualized care and to find out what works best for you. So before you begin, what are you gonna need? First, you're gonna want some sort of stockinette. This is just a thin liner that goes over the skin. So if you put lotion on, you can put this over the top so you don't get lotion full or lotion all over your things. It keeps your skin nice and healthy too. So this is layer one. You're also gonna need some bandages for your toes. This is a two inch elastomal bandage toe bandage that's folded in half. I just have one, someone might need two, but you'll have one of those nice and rolled up, ready to go. And then you're gonna need some sort of padding. This is where it gets a little crazy. There are so many different kinds and everyone's gonna be different. I do have a couple of videos on different foams and paddings that are out there. You can check that out. Um, there is a basic, we call Artiflex, just a thin cotton foam. Um, this is as basic as it gets, just to line the skin. Next step would be, this is a rose at all soft. It's a little bit of a thicker foam than the cotton, um, but it's still pretty durable and thin. Um, just gives a little bit more comfort, a little bit more compression. Someone may have various levels of gray foam. This is a pretty thin gray foam. Someone may have thicker gray foam that their therapist provided. And some may have um, more complex, like the, that has chipped foam inside or even swell spots. This is obviously a very small one for the top of the foot or the leg. Again, there's a lot of options, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna to try to keep it really simple. I'm just gonna use the cotton as well as the thin white Rosedale soft foam um, to make it really easy to follow along. But again, change and get whatever that you might need. Then we're also gonna have our compression bandages ready. So these are short stretch bandages. These are Comperland bandages specifically. Um, they are meant to help reduce swelling. They are not ACE bandages. These are different and special. So again, I'll link all of these things down below that you can find um, online. And then lastly, this is optional. Someone might want Tetra Grip or Tuber Grip some sort of liner like this that you can actually put over the top of the bandages at the end and it might keep everything in place longer rather than having them slide down. So again, optional, but something else that someone might like to have. So that's what you need ready to go. Lastly though, don't forget your tape. You can use masking tape or medical tape. Again, I'll give some options below, but you wanna have that ready to go um, to make everything easier, especially if you're doing this on your own. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stockinette on. Ideally, someone's had a shower or bathing and they have lotion on, making sure that their skin's not dry, and then the lotion has fully dried. Now, when I was preparing to record this, I realized I didn't have enough stockinette. I just have one for the lower leg. If someone's doing a full leg bandaging, they wanna have stockinette go all the way from the toes to the thigh, but for mine, it will be a little bit short. So we're gonna put that on all the way up there. And again, all the way up for someone else. You wanna have that skin covered with some sort of stockinette. From there, we're gonna do our toe bandages. Now these are a little bit challenging, especially some people can't reach their toes, so we might have to modify without it. Ideally, someone has assistance to um, put them on. Might have to be sitting with the leg cross, whatever works. But what we're gonna do is we're going to start at the base of the foot and anchor that bandage around. We wanna make sure that we avoid that little toe so that we don't irritate it. From there, what we'll do is it doesn't matter what order you go in, we just, we're gonna avoid the little toe. Some people will have swelling in their little toe, but a lot actually don't. So if you do, you can bandage the little toe, but it doesn't like being bandaged. It gets sore and painful easily. So just think about that. But from there, we're going to wrap around the toes one by one overlapping at least halfway, sometimes a little bit more with the toes. Okay, you don't have to pull as tight as it can go, but you want a little bit of tension all the way around until you get the base of, until you get to the base of the toe. And then from there, we're gonna wrap around the foot and go to the next one. And again, it does not matter what order you go in, you can go every other and come back around. You just wanna make sure that you get them all, again, possibly leaving out the little toe. So getting all the way to the base, wrapping around. I'm gonna skip one just to make sure it fits correctly. I don't have extra overlap. Overlapping a couple times there and around. And then getting that last toe that I skipped. Okay, so good coverage. Again, you try not to also have too much bulk on the side. So from there, I'd actually cut this and just tuck it in. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna gently wrap it around so I don't cut mine too early. So I can use it for demonstration later. Okay, so I would not have that normal bulk. You would cut that toe wrap and tuck it in and that would be your toe wrap. Again, leaving the pinky toe and making sure there's not too much pressure low so it's not digging in. After the toe wraps, then we're gonna go on to our padding. Again, like I said, this is where everyone's gonna be a little bit different on what they have. So maybe a, the lymphedema therapist you're working with has something best for you. We have the Thin Cotton um, uh, Artiflex. We have the Rose all Soft, which is probably but more realistic for the leg. And then some people will have gray foam throughout or other paddings. And then some may also just have swell spots for stubborn areas, like this one goes on the top of the foot. Um, and then we bandage over the top if someone has um, fibrosis are there. So whatever works, but for the sake of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Rosadol Soft. Um, this might be nice, the cotton might be nice for the foot, especially if someone's trying to get shoes on. Um, the thicker foams just don't work as well. So if if there's a chance that someone can use this and be able to get around with their shoes, they might be able to do that. But we're gonna do this, the Rosadol Soft. So I have two options here, two sizes, I should say. Um, what I would probably do as well is to take a little bit of cotton and put a little bit on the front of the ankle and then also a little bit behind the knee because these are areas that get irritated easily um, and then we'll, we'll wrap over that. So I'm gonna put this here. We wanna again avoid the toes and wrap around. Now this stuff, it has just a slight tension to it. We can't pull um, too tight, but we'll be able to wrap up. Again, this is not easy for someone to do on their own. So hopefully someone has assistance to be able to help with this. Try to avoid too many creases. And then we, from there, we overlap halfway up. So 50% overlap on the foam itself as you spiral it up the leg. And then from there, you can tape it down, you can tuck it in, whatever works. Again, I would normally have stockinette all the way up. I do not 
but you would have that on and then this could go up the rest of the way. So I'm gonna untuck that. Actually, I forgot my cotton. Put that behind the knee and then we'll do this. Again, use tape, use tape to help keep everything in place. And then going up from there. This is actually easier to do in standing at this point. Um, if you can't stand, you can do it sitting like me, but if you're able to stand, I would highly recommend doing that. Okay, and then this would be a little bit low for me. Ideally, would have a little bit higher, um, but I can tape this down and stand so you can see. And then th that should be overlapped more, but again, I have another piece that goes a little bit higher and then we would move on. So for the sake of this, I'm gonna just tuck this in and then we're gonna move on to the bandages itself. So again, have your tape ready. I have some here. Masking tape works great. Um, there are some medical tapes that are also wonderful. Um, this bandages wise, I have a six centimeter for my foot, a couple eights for my lower leg, a 10 and a 12 for my upper. Some people will need more bandages. Some people might get away with one less. Um, I would recommend at least four total, so two for lower, two for upper, but I ideally like five, one total, and then some people need a little bit more. So I'm gonna use a six for my foot. Um, this is where it gets hard because it's hard to bend the knee. So the other option would be is to not do the thigh, is to just do the lower leg first and then come do the thigh separate so that you can bend the leg. I actually think that might be easier, um, but we're gonna wrap and get around the base of the foot once or twice, watch that little toe, avoid that toe. And then we want a good stretch on it. If you want to reduce the swelling, you have to get some tension on this. You still wanna overlap 50% or halfway. And then what we're gonna do, in turn so we can see, is we're going to start to go up the foot until we get about where that crease is. Now this is where it gets challenging, um, hard to reach. So I. I would, again, maybe not do the thigh um, foam first, just do the lower leg so you can bend the knee. When we get to this point, this is what I like to do is we get to the crease. When I come around the next time, instead of going to the heel and keep and going like that and going around, we get too many layers right at the front and that causes irritation in the front of the ankle. So I like to come straight around, okay? Straight around and then come back down, overlapping lower, and then going back 50% overlap over the top one, and then 50% overlap the bottom one. And really trying to minimize the amount that hits the, right in the front, okay, from there, and that helps avoid irritation in the front of the ankle. Again, more complex. If that's too challenging, just spiral it up and keep going. But that's a little trick I like to do just to avoid some irritation. Now, I'm just gonna finish this one off. If you know your herringbone, go ahead and do that. I'll show that in the next one. And then you can tape that down. I'm just gonna tuck this in though. Okay, so that's the foot and the ankle. The next one, we're gonna start at the foot. I'm just not gonna do as many layers, so I'm just gonna still start, because we want that gradient pressure to encourage fluid moving up. So I'm gonna have one around that base of the foot to anchor, then I'm gonna come higher on the foot, and then I'm gonna come and just get the heel, and then I'm gonna to start to move up the ankle. So a little bit less. I lost mine, should have taped it. Okay. And then from there, we're gonna to start to go up the lower leg. Now I'm gonna show the herringbone. If this is challenging, I would recommend just spiraling it up, 50% overlap. You don't have to do anything fancy, okay? But for herringbone, what that looks like is you come high on the, when you come around and start to go low. And then as you come around, you come up high. And then as you come around, you come down low and it makes this herringbone effect as you go. You're still holding good tension the entire time. And this is just a nice effective compression. But if that's challenging, like what are you doing? <laughs> just go ahead and start to spiral it up. 
overlapping halfway. So there's that little bit of herringbone we have in the front. Okay, so then we'll go on to the next one. I'm gonna go on to the ankle and up. And I'm just gonna spiral this one, give some tension as you come around, make sure you keep good tension the entire time, all the way around on all sides. Until you get to that base of the knee. Now, if we'd had this foam off, you'd actually wanna stop there um, or have that other foam on already. Um, everyone's gonna be different. Some people might just have three and then stop. Because I have extra, I'm actually gonna just keep going. When I get to the back of the knee, the same thing. I don't want a lot of bulk and I don't want it to fold. So I kind of feel where that crease is and I have one that starts right below it and then I kind of have one that starts right above it and then I'll come back in and kind of get the middle. And that's how I typically do it. I don't like to have one bandaging ending on the knee. So I'm gonna start up and put that above, but most people will end below the knee and then we can go ahead and tape or I'll just tuck this in and then move on. And then for the next one, you can start below the knee. Anchor it. Again, you can tape these down. Just make sure you get the corners tucked in. And then we're gonna spiral up right over the front of the knee. And just keep working your way up. You are welcome to herringbone this. I'm just gonna keep with the spiral. Make it simple. Again, this would be easy at this point in standing if someone is able to stand. And again, I would ideally have this a little bit higher if I had more foam. So there's that one. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this down. Now, if I had a sixth one, um, you could do one above the knee and come up, and then you could do one final one all the way with the full leg that's longer. Because I just have one left, I'm just gonna show you another technique that I like for the upper leg. Um, to keep it from falling down, because that's such a big issue that a lot of people talk about these fall down so easily. So instead of coming from the bottom and coming up, when I'm finishing at these top ones, I'd actually like to prefer to start at the top. So I'm gonna turn and stand so it's a little bit easier to see, is that I like to start with anchor at the very top. So I'm gonna do two to anchor. And then I'm gonna actually come down and go back down the lower closer or lower the leg. So I'm gonna come back down, swoop down to however low you need to, but I'm gonna go above the knee and then start to make my way back up. And what this does is it does allow or does help keep the bandages up in place and slide down less. And then you kind of make your way back up. And you can do that with a couple of them. You don't have to do it just with the last one. And then from there, when you're finishing, you can tape it. Again, maybe you would have another one that you would start at the ankle, going all the way up just to finish. Whatever works. This isn't the tape I normally like to use. It's not as great, but I'll link some of the good tapes below. You want to have that nice and good. And then from there, you can... Um, use tuber grip or tetra grip and put over to keep everything in place. But that is a basic bandaging um, step by step routine for compression bandaging. Again, using Rosadol Soft, a really basic one. And then we use five bandages here. Um, but work with your certified lymphedema therapist to find what works best for you as far as what add ins, foams, paddings that you might need to help with those stubborn areas. So that's a full bandaging routine for lymphedema. You will want to again work with your lymphedema therapist to alter your specific needs or to address troubled areas. If you only have ankle swelling from vein issues, you may only bandage to the knee. If you have fibrosis or really thickened, hardened tissue, you may need chipped foams, gray foams, or other paddings. Everyone's going to have different needs. But I hope this helps someone get started and I hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.